Hi guys, welcome back. So all the buzz and the craze on YouTube and all the tech blogs right now is being about the new iPhone SE 2020. This is Apple's response to the budget space right now and making the iPhone more affordable. But even at $400, the iPhone SE is still too expensive. Then we're also going to look at, is the iPhone SE even worth your money, right? So my name is Kingsley. On this channel, we talk about tech, we review gadgets, we talk about phones, we talk about tech history, and we talk about tech as a whole. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing and you will find some very good tech uploads coming in from the future, right? So let's do it. So you see, the mobile phone industry right now is super, super saturated. The mobile phone industry is busier now than ever. New companies are rising on the horizon every day. New companies are popping out from China. New companies are popping out in the Middle East. New companies are popping out in Africa. And this poses a challenge to all the bigger boys that have not been playing in the market or in the budget market segment. You see, in continents like Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, South America and all these places, there are still a lot of untapped potentials in these markets. These are places that we still have a lot of people that have not had a smartphone before. Some of them are coming on the internet for the first time. Some of them are handling smartphones for the first time. Some of them are buying their first smartphones in 2020. Some of them bought their first smartphones in 2018 or 2019 or 2017. And there are still uh, millions of them like that that have not had any cell phone before what they usually focus on is just feature phones the phone that you just put a sim card with buttons and just make a call that's what most of these people have so these markets are still very fresh and that is why companies like samsung xiaomi huawei and all these guys focus so much or put so much into these markets because that is where the sweet spot is right now now for companies like apple for a very long time now, Apple has actually ignored the budget market. There was a certain time Apple decided to go to India and started selling older phones because they just didn't want to go back to the drawing board and create something for the Indian market, you know. And this really, really annoyed the people over there in India. They felt insulted. Some of the Apple CEOs in India had to, um, out of anger, they resigned and joined um, brands like Oppo, Xiaomi and the rest of them. But you see, right now, the flagship space is super, super saturated. The flagship space is not as lucrative anymore because people aren't really buying new phones as they used to buy in the past anymore. Take for instance, you buy an iPhone 10 or you buy an iPhone XS Max or you buy an iPhone 11 Pro, most of these phones cost above $1,000. And then you, you, you start using this phone. Some people will use this phone for like five, six years. They are not bothering to upgrade and they are not bothering to, um, they are not even thinking of buying another one in the next one year because why? The hardware of the phone is very good. The softwares of the phone are very good. Like in the case of Apple, iPhones have like five, six years of uh, software support. So you still enjoy software updates this long and then you are still going to be able to do a lot of things that even the new phones will do. Coupled with that, even the new phones, most of them are made up of like 70% of the old ones. So there's actually no need to upgrade to a new phone. So people are not upgrading and this has affected Apple so much finances and everything in fact in 2019 apple stopped publishing their financial records publicly because it wasn't doing so well coupled with the trade war between the trump administration and china it's affecting apple because one of the biggest markets that apple has actually been enjoying revenue from is the chinese market and in protest to um, the trump administration treating most of the chinese companies the way he's treating them most chinese people actually stopped buying iphones they switched over to come to um, companies like Huawei, um, Oppo and all these other Chinese brands. So this has been a big problem for Apple. Now I've heard most people say Apple does not need to sell a lot of phones to make money, they can sell services. Apple services don't work on other devices, Apple services work basically on Apple phones. 90% of Apple services work on iPhones and iPads and MacBooks and if people aren't buying enough iPhones and iPads and MacBooks, how is Apple going to be selling these services? So that is a problem. So right now, Apple is saying, hey, we have seen our mistakes. We have, uh, we have realized what we've done that is wrong in the past. So we want to also join this budget space so that we can make the iPhone affordable for everybody. And so what is the strategy they are bringing in? They go back three years or four years back and went and brought in a phone that <laughs> is super outdated. And then they put a new chip in it and they present it to you and say, hey, 
you guys can actually afford this one and what is the price tag on it 400 bucks too much money but the problem with this strategy is that the budget phone space or the mid-range space doesn't function the way the flagship space functions now the budget space is super super crowded because there are a lot of companies that are offering some crazy deals and some crazy phones with some mad specs for um cheap money right so even at 400 dollars you can buy a lot of phones from this space that offer you things like wide angle lenses or micro lens night mode um, up to 64 megapixel cameras and all these things and at a very very low price so if companies like apple want to invade this space and come and dominate they should have gone back to the drawing board to draw out something that is totally fresh something that is totally different and something that is totally meant for this market you know you don't go back four years back or three years back and bringing it all an old phone and come and put a new piece of um, uh, a chipset inside and hey, say hey this is our response and you start offering them to the people let's talk about the pricing four hundred dollars four hundred dollars is still too expensive for an iphone now i will explain why you see these other markets these emerging markets and this um uh, mid-range markets the way business is done there is different from the way business is done in America and in Europe because this market a lot of systems are not in place and a lot of things are not in place so the companies that sells these phones like Samsung Oppo Xiaomi and Realme have to step into this market and try to see how they can control the market and subsidize the prices so that people can afford them why because in these places money doesn't really flow like the money flows in america money doesn't really flow like money flows in england or in europe so these places people struggle a lot to get money and because people struggle a lot to get money they mind the way they spend the money they want to spend the money on something that is worth it that is why samsung creates some very very specific smartphones for some market like the galaxy m series for the for the indian market and a few other markets right so what happens is once Samsung releases a new phone, Samsung brings the phone into the countries and then when they bring the phones into the countries, they distribute the phone to the um, dealers and then offer the dealers some good deals that makes the dealers keep the prices of the phones low. Like for instance in Nigeria where I live, every phone that every dealer sells, every Samsung phone, Samsung actually pays the dealer an incentive and then Samsung urges the dealers to keep the prices at at a fixed price where deal people will be able to afford the phone so you don't have anybody skyrocketing prices anybody that does that samsung approaches you and say hey this was not the deal bring down the price please so that people will be able to afford the phone we had a deal with you and all that and so this market control actually helps the consumers um, be able to afford the phones and keep the prices where the consumers can actually be able to put their hands but in the case of apple Dealers have to go abroad to source these phones to bring them to the markets to come and start selling. Dealers have to go to countries like Dubai, China, America or England to go and source these phones and bring them into their own local markets. And by the time somebody pays a flight ticket of maybe a thousand dollars from here, um, from where you are to Dubai or China, you go and buy the phones and then you bring them back. By the time the, the dealer puts the cost of the flying, the cost of hotel bills, the cost of everything into the market that he went to buy, you actually know that it's noticed that a phone of $400 is now costing like $700 or $750 or $650. And that is actually crazy. So it now means that when by the time the iPhone SE gets into this mid-range or budget market, the phone is now selling for $650. Most people will not be able to afford it. Even those that, will, that are able to afford it see it like it's a useless deal. They will actually go for maybe the Galaxy S10 or the Galaxy S20. Or they will even prefer to add some money on it and buy the Galaxy S20 which has more features and is a new phone and it's a better phone right just before i made this video i went online i checked all the indian blogs i was actually trying to see what um they predict that the price of the iphone se will be by the time it gets to india most of them are predicting that the price is going to be between 4500 to 45,000 indian rupees and that is about 550 dollars or 600 dollars or there about that is crazy like at 500 or 600 dollars you can buy the redmi k20 pro you can buy the redmi k20 you can buy these other big phones you know in that in those markets that offer far far more than what the iphone se will offer so if apple wants to succeed in this space right now 
first of all they have to change strategies they have to be present in those markets officially or they have to have an official presence in this market there are no apple stores in africa there are no apple stores in most of asia there are no apple stores in these emerging markets so if people buy the phones after service after sales service is not there warranty support is not there so you just go and buy the phone and use it at your own risk if the phone has an issue there is nothing that you can do about it whereas if you buy oppo if you buy a samsung phone and the phone has an issue samsung warranty or samsung service centers oppo warranty or oppo service centers are all open to you to go and actually get your phone fixed so if apple wants to succeed at this pace right now apple have to come up with a new strategy go into these markets check the markets see what the people are saying see what the customers are saying look for a way to subsidize this product so that everybody will be able to buy it. That is the only way the iPhone will be available in every hand. That is the only way the iPhones will be more affordable. Without this, every other thing Apple brings, they are just um, wasting their time.